Today in this video, we're doing a comparison between powdered nutrients and liquid nutrients for hydroponics. We're going to be growing the black seeded Simpson variety of lettuce, cracky style. It's going to take about five weeks to grow. For the liquid nutrients, we're using the General Hydroponics Flora Series. I've been using these for several years. When you mix these together, you get a new NPK ratio of 7611, and the powder version is an 8513. So it's almost exactly the same. The point of this is not really to see which one does better, it's just trying to see if there's any differences between growth. And for this experiment, we're really just doing the vegetative stage. We're gonna see if there's any differences with the lettuce growing. But we might do a video later on with uh, probably peppers to see if uh, there's any differences in uh, the fruiting or flowering stage of the plant. I did another video recently about why you'd wanna use a powdered nutrient versus a liquid nutrient. That link will be right up here or at the end of the video. Now, when you mix this solution here with the Journal Hydroponics Flora Series into tap water or my tap water, you get a final pH of 6.5 and the same with the Veg Plus Blue and powdered nutrients. For this experiment, I made sure the TDS was identical when I mixed up the solution with my tap water and I get a final TDS of about 660 parts per million in both of these containers. One thing I might add before we get on to the end of this video when these lettuce heads are done growing is the powder nutrients actually kind of smell like uh, a multivitamin if you've ever taken supplements before. And actually that's kind of makes sense because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's citric acid in there. Um, and there's also, well, other minerals and stuff too, which is what you'd find in a multivitamin. So anyways, with that personal note aside, uh, let's go ahead and get on towards the end of this video and see what happens. Okay, so before we get on to finishing up the experiment, I figured this would be a really good time to introduce the light that I'm actually using for it, and that is the Viper Spectra P2000. Uh, now, if you're not interested in hearing about this light, go to the time you see here in the video, and it's going to take you towards the end. So there's actually a bunch of models within a lineup. This is just the P2000. Uh, I'm not going to talk about a whole lot of specs with this light because you can look all that up online if you want to. I will be leaving links in the description if you're interested in that or if you want to purchase it. And there might actually be a coupon code by the time I post this video. So this is a light right here. There's no on or off switch, which is why I have it on right now because it's just plugged into the wall. And it does have a dimmer switch, which is a really nice dimmer switch actually. And this is the dimmest setting. Uh, at this setting is putting out practically no heat whatsoever. The, the light's not even really even warm. Um, but it's also, also at its dimmest setting, one thing that I've noticed with this light is actually that uh, it, there's, there's no flicker to it whatsoever. And some lights, when you dim them down, some grow lights anyways, if they do have a dimmer on them, they tend to have like a little bit of a flicker and it's not really gonna hurt the plants at all. The plants don't care, but uh, just, that's a personal preference, I guess. It's just kind of a, it's a quality thing. So dimmest, and then we're gonna turn it all the way up to bright, and that's what it looks like with this brightest setting if you wanted to shine it in someone's eyes, the camera. I'm gonna turn it back down here. So uh, Viper Spectre is actually a company that's been around for a while. Um, like all the other manufacturers, they started out making blurple lights, and like all the other manufacturers, they have been transitioning to using more white light uh, for growing plants. Uh, why not? Mimic the sun, right? So this light here is, it's a pretty typical layout with LEDs. It's a warm white, cool white diodes with red and infrared diodes. I feel like I'm repeating myself every time I'm doing a grow light review for that. Um, but as far as the quality, it seems like a pretty good build quality. Um, the panel is actually covered in like a, like a, almost like a silicone or a gel or something. Uh, it's just to protect the diodes from getting uh, wet or if you touch them, you don't want to get oils on your diodes because then that shortens the lifespan, especially when they get hotter. But here's the back side of it. You got the ballast on there. And some ballasts I've seen with other grow lights uh, is where you actually dim the light. And I don't really like that. I don't like getting a tool out to adjust the dimness uh, or the brightness level to, of the light. I, I prefer the way this light is made with the dimmer switch actually mounted on it and built into it. That's what's really nice about it. Uh, it's a little bit weighty at about three to five pounds. Um, it's, I wouldn't really say that's heavy, but it's that heavy because it has heat sinks on it. So uh, it does get a little bit warm, not very warm, but uh, just a little warm. And you can see that the fins are actually painted with a, like a dark gray color. Uh, some lights are made where they don't put any paint on them whatsoever. They're just shiny metal or they're white. Uh, and that's actually not as good uh, efficient cooling. It's actually better because of black body radiation. Uh, I would suggest looking that up if you don't know about that. But when something's painted black, uh, it radiates heat better than if it was just shiny or white. 
So anyways, obviously it's a fanless design, which is what a lot of lights are going to these days as the efficiency of lights gets better. And there's not a heck of a lot more I can really say about this light. It's, it's just a, it's a pretty nice light. Uh, the, I, I did test its efficiency. Oop. I did test its efficiency. Uh, I, I was kind of surprised by it actually, which I'll tell you what it is in a second here. Um, but the temperature with its full setting with its brightness all the way up uh, after about an hour of being on, the fins on the back were only about 110 degrees and the uh, driver itself was 120. So really not that hot at all. So that's actually a good sign because some lights get too hot and that's not good for the diodes. It reduces their lifespan. Uh, so this light here, I actually tested it uh, with no reflective walls. And that's just because I'm just trying to test the light itself and not trying to cheat at all. But if you were to put reflective walls around it, it would go up a little bit. This light here is around 1.2 micromoles per joule. So it's a little bit on the lower end as far as lighting efficiency goes, but that isn't everything. I think spectral output is probably a little more important than uh, efficiency because you're only talking pennies in electricity. If you want to compare it to another light, that's like 1.6 micromoles or even just two. It's, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but if you were to put reflective walls around it, the efficiency might go up to maybe 1.3 or so. So it's not really that bad. I've tested worse lights than that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can really say about it. So we're going to go ahead and get on towards the end of the experiment and see what's going on. Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks and we're going to go ahead and conclude the experiment here. And that's simply because the container here on the right, the water in the bottom is almost completely gone now. And the container on the left has about a pint left. And because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the container on the right is probably the heavier plant. Um, but there's a few things I wanted to mention here before we move on to looking at the weight or the roots. Um, one, as you can see, they've been growing under the Vibrospectra P2000, growing just fine. I've been pretty happy with this light so far. Uh, I have not checked the pH in either one of these containers. I have not checked the TDS. I have not topped this off. I pretty much just set it and forget it. This is about as set it and forget it as you can get with the cracky method when you're growing lettuce. And I, I thoroughly enjoy doing it this way. I don't have to water anything. I don't gotta check anything. I just let it grow and let it go and then come back and it's done in about 30 days or a little over 30 days usually. So there's a few things you might notice here with these plants. There's a little bit of a difference. And you can see here the plant on the left, which I believe was the powdered nutrients. Uh, it looks a little bit more compact and this plant looks a little bit more lanky, uh, a little more reaching going on, which obviously has nothing to do with the light itself. They're both under the same light. The uh, power reaching the plant canopy is exactly the same. There's a reason for this, and I believe it's genetics, because when I started these off, I started about uh, five or six seeds per net pot. And then as the seeds grew and sprouted, I chose the ones that were growing identically at the same rate. And it just so happened that the one I chose here on the right there were two seedlings that were growing out of this, that the new, the, the true leaves that were coming out of the uh, sprout leaves, they didn't have jagged edges on them. They were kind of rounded. So where the one over here, they were jagged, but there was also some rounded ones in there, the, the, the actual new, let it, the real lettuce leaves coming out of that sprout. Um, so they started out that way. They started out with those rounded leaves, and this started out with the jagged edge leaves. Um, same seed packet and the same age of the seed. So I think there's genetics playing a part in there, which is why we're gonna do this experiment again. And I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. Uh, but you can see here the leaves, they look kind of lanky and it's kind of weird if you look at like this leaf down here, you know, that grew out like that, kind of long looking. It's where these leaves over here on this plant, they, they're, they're shorter, it's, it's, it's really weird. Uh, I tried looking this up because I don't know everything. So I looked up to see if there was, if it was like a, uh, a male or a female type of thing. I, I'm pretty sure that doesn't matter and I, that's not a thing, but I could be wrong. Uh, there wasn't really anything else I could uh, point to that. It's, it's not the nutrients. The only thing I could say about the nutrients and maybe the difference possibly is the, green, the more green appearance to this lettuce leaf compared to most of these over here. There's a slightly more green tinge, but I've also seen that before in other grows. And like I said, that could just be a genetic thing. I always like to do experiments more than once for reasons like this and to test different aspects of things and uh, changed variables and see what happens. So 
that aside, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the weight and the roots and talk about a few other things. All right, so here's the lettuce head that was growing in the powder nutrients, and here's what the roots look like. They're nice, white, and healthy, nice and dense. And here's the lettuce head that was growing in the liquid nutrients. You can see here they've uh, spread out a little bit more. As far as like the weight goes, they feel about the same. Uh, these aren't quite as white. They're maybe a little less white, but they're not poor health or anything like that. And both of the solutions are what's left of it. They both smell slightly anaerobic, so they smell about the same. So here is the weight of the lettuce head that was grown in the liquid nutrients at 141 grams. And here's the weight of the lettuce head that was grown in the powder nutrients at 123 grams. So not a huge difference, but this is pretty much as I expected just by looking at them, how they were growing. And now just to please the crowd, we're going to go ahead and just taste the lettuce real quick. This is the lettuce piece that was grown from the head and the liquid nutrients. And this is the one from the powder nutrients. So let's try the liquid nutrient one first. It's, um, it's a tiny bit bitter. A little tiny bit bitter. So let's try the one with the powder nutrients. Um, I would say it tastes exactly the same. Okay, so I realized this experiment wasn't exactly conclusive, and that's why we're going to do this again in part two of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Uh, but in part two, you're going to get two experiments in one. We're going to redo this experiment, compare the results to this experiment, and the second part of that is we're going to test uh, by growing a head of lettuce to see how much weight is actually gained through photons of light versus how much it actually absorbs in minerals and other stuff like that. And to do that, we're going to be weighing out the minerals that go into reverse osmosis water that's starting with basically nothing in the water at all. And then we're going to let the plant absorb all of the water that's in the bucket. And then we're going to dehydrate the lettuce after it's over, the roots and everything, and then weigh it afterwards and see how much weight it put on with the energy it absorbed from light. So I've, this is something I've been wanting to test for a long time. It's kind of interesting. Um, I'm sure there's probably some stuff online I could look up uh, and read all about that stuff, or maybe someone else did this already, but I've never done it, and I just want to do it because it's fun, and I think a lot of people might enjoy it too. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.